Oh, hello, hello, hello. Wow, what's up, guys? If I... Oh, hi. Quick meme to get us started. Uh, ha, I'm all about... I'm all about memes. Let's go. It was my favorite speech I've ever seen a president give. It was the night, it was the, night the United States leader of ISIS, Trump, comes out of the Situation Room at, like, midnight in the White House, and he walks down that tunnel... Like he's, he gives a press conference, like he's giving a just killed a guy press conference. He walks up in front of the entire world at midnight and just goes, Abu Bakar al Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. And a fucking... <laughs> Not even a speech, just mean talk for 40 The meanest talk you've ever heard in front of the whole world. Abu. We could hear him crying, I said. Abu, don't cry. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Abu cried, he cried quite a bit. I wouldn't have cried. <laughs> Cry baby back daddy, that's what we were all calling. <laughs> I love everything about that. Do you think, I'm curious, for some people, like Trump, I wonder if he's worked at like having a distinct sound. I think it's really good for branding. Um, it's just, the, with the hands and the way that he speaks, um, he's just, I wonder, I wonder how much of that is intentional. Did you blow a breaker? No, I just, my lights are off. Also, I haven't plugged these in yet. We'll see how it works. I got, wait, not this. Filters for the wide camera downstairs to see if it cuts down on glare on the monitor. Will it actually do that? Who knows? We'll find out. Why do you remove stream VOD's Destiny? I often don't have time to watch your stream because of my time zone, so I put it in an unlisted playlist, but whenever I go there, most of them are removed. Um, I think it's because August is just worried about, like, depending on the topic, if, like, somebody, like, reports some random shit or something. Look at this. Look at this polarized filter. Does, this, does anything cool happen if we... Hold on, watch this. Look. Look at how crazy the world is now. Oh, my God. You're not, light is only coming from one direction. How, how wild is that? I don't know if it does anything. We'll find out downstairs later tonight. You only have one chance to answer this right. Who is the best member of House's team? Well, hold on. When you say best, what do you mean best? Well, hold on. If you're saying best, there's one. What is the best best? I know. I know who the best one is. I know. The answer is, do you know? There's only one right answer. You could try to do another answer if you want, but it wouldn't be as good as my answer. And the correct answer is Foreman, obviously. But that, is that really what you're asking me? Is that really what you're asking me? And the answer why is because Foreman is House 2.0. Foreman is the next house. So who could be the best house doctor besides the person who's most like house? It would be, it would be House 2.0, which is Foreman. Plus he's black. Foreman is Cuddy 2.0, Chase is House 2.0? What? Weak. No. <sighs> what do you think about Ukraine's attack on the Kursk region in Russia? Um... I haven't like looked over the entire situation yet. I would say that I'm pretty disappointed uh, in Ukraine. Um, I feel like in terms of attacking into Russia, I don't know why uh, they didn't do it sooner, okay? They should have said, fuck you, USA. Give us our goddamn weapons. We're going yesterday, okay? <laughs> the only question is, are we all going to die? 
Are we going to have sick-ass planes backing us up, okay? And sick-ass rifles and artillery shells destroying. Am I allowed to say orcs? Or did we decide if that's a racial slur or not? I know everybody's hype as fuck about it, but I truly have no idea if, like, it's a good push or if it's a bad push, if it's a sustainable push, or I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't know fuck all about active military conflict. Chase had more consistently good diagnoses. Foreman's main thing was trying to control houses and sanity. They both had good diagnoses. No? Come on. Sarcoidosis? I feel like the writers at some point, I feel like they cycled through like the same three disease recommendations every single time. Amylo what was the one? There was one, not amylo amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, and what, neoplastia syndrome? Is that if you have cancer? Show this to Nathan and record it. Bro, I had this horrible nightmare. Oh my God. Me and Nathan were play fighting. And then I stabbed him in the chest with a knife. And then I went to take him to a hospital. And the nurse saw me and I was like, I need to admit my son. I think I might have, like, he's like dying because I stabbed him. And the nurse like glared at me and wouldn't do anything. And I'm like holding him, I'm, like trying to like give them my son. I'm like, can you please look at this guy? And then the nurse looks at me and she's like, you don't think I don't know who you are? If your son dies, you're gonna get charged with murder. And I'm like, this is unhinged. And then it took her like an hour and then finally a doctor came out they're like, your son's dead. And then she's like on her phone and I'm like, and then I woke up. <laughs> she was like, Twitter hater in my dream. <laughs> what the fuck? An actual hater. What is this? Uh, read these tweets by Donald Trump. That is the worst dream every parent has a version of, unfortunately. Is killing your own kid and then a hater from Twitter refusing to admit your child to the ICU? Is that a common dream? <laughs> or Golem. Okay. Um, or well, both. Uh, read these tweets by Donald Trump. <laughs> News media has never been so wrong or so dirty. Purposely incorrect stories and phony sources to meet their agenda. Why is he sitting like L from Death Note? Okay, this isn't half bad. Well, it's probably, this is, is this the actual guy that voices Golem? I mean, he should sound like him, right? Starts a war, more hemorrhoids? I thought you were supposed to sit like that to avoid hemorrhoids. Isn't that the exact opposite? The war, and then they use that to say, well, it's a bigger narrative. It's about the occupation. Meanwhile, they have a gender apartheid inside Gaza. Christians are evacuating because churches are being burned. Their doctrine is, is fascist and genocidal against Jews. When the whole world hates you. Megan from community, I'm a loser. Okay, I'm good. I don't need to. I'm already cringing. I heard four words. So I'm done. MAGA and Trump community, I'm a little bit concerned and there's a blind spot I want to bring up to you. What benefit do you get from calling out Joe Rogan for complimenting RFK? What benefit? What benefit do you get from saying, I wonder how people are going to boom at the next UFC fight when Joe Rogan walks in? Do you realize who are the only two names that have been constant the last 20 years in the UFC brand? One guy's name is Dana White, who is feared and respected. The other guy's name is Joe Rogan, who is loved, liked, and respected. Okay, fully admit, I don't know fuck all about UFC or any of that. 
wasn't Joe Rogan more popular in the UFC scene like five years ago? Does he still do a ton of commentary? I know I've seen him come in and commentate now, but I feel like he's more known as a podcaster now, right? Or I, I could be totally wrong. I'm not sure. Do you think UFC is going to flip on Joe because he complimented RF? He still does a lot. He's still very popular. Oh, okay. Came the vaccine position that he fought Fauci and we wrote. That's pretty cool. I like it when people come from areas and then they still do that shit, even if they grow somewhere else. That's nice. The spoke. You think they're going to do that? And why would you even call out Joe Rogan when Joe Rogan is friends with Dana and put Dana in a tough spot to have to defend you and Joe? And obviously Dana's a, he's a pro, he's a boss, he's a street guy, he's dealt with everybody. He's not going to have a problem handling that. But do you think that's the right move? And it gets me to continue thinking. still clean carpets? Yeah. I got new rugs on all my shit. My kitchen and my computer area looks so cute. I don't think I can show you. Wait, you can kind of see it. Look, wait, look, wait. Look at my, look at my new area rug. I had to move all my stuff off the floor to put it down. I got Gorilla Grip tape to keep it in the right place on the floor. <laughs> now I just have to buy a real, a real vacuum. I'll get it eventually. You're thinking about this and saying, while all this stuff is going on tonight, a lady named Kamala had a packed house in Arizona. You know who showed up? The same people that were not happy about what happened in 2022 midterms, two weeks before midterms, when Supreme Court flipped the Roe v. Wade abortion position and put it back on the states. And while everybody thought there was going to be a red wave, there was not a red wave. Got it. And those people haven't forgotten about it yet because it's an important issue to them. And they may come out in 2024 because... Two Supreme Court positions could flip in the next four years, and they don't want to give that to you. Oh, my God. So they may not be voting for Kamala. They just don't want you to choose the Supreme Court positions. They're not voting for Kamala. That's all they're doing. And so it seems like all the shots and mocking and making fun of her, thinking like, yeah, she can't beat you. She can beat you. 49 to 47 is what the number is right now with her having the lead over you. Yeah, but that's not going to happen. So this is the problem that I have with MAGA that I think is a little bit concerning. Here's how. I don't know if I ever took a picture of myself before. Look at how cute. I look, all my cords back here are organized. I've got them like, they're zip tied. They look like they're laying out here. There's so many cords over. They're all like, I've got them zip tied to the, to the bar back here. So it's not like crazy. I've got my power supplies are balanced now. We can see what's going on on Discord over here. I've got all my chats up, my total mix. Look, I got this one device. It replaced all my shit. I put a speaker up here. I got a little Lego dude. I got a bill from the IRS. I, I don't know what's going on down there. The IRS sent me a letter saying that they moved a thing I owe them into collections. Hold on, I don't know what the fuck shows up on this. Saying that I owe them It says that I owe them $253 from 2018. I feel like Trump went back and fucked with my taxes just to fuck with me. I don't even know what the fuck this is for or why or how. There's like a seven year, what is the statute of limitations on rent? I don't even know where the fuck this came from. He just like sent me a letter. It's like, by the way, what? Careful might be a scam. No. Oh, shit. Wait, I didn't even fucking consider that. Wait, holy shit. Did I try to pay this? No, it has my, um... Um... Wait, that's not... Hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, one second. <laughs> I'm trying to think. It looks like an I. It looks like an IRS thing, but it might. But it might not be. 
No, it can't be. It's saying like direct payment. You can do www.irs.gov slash payments. No, this can't be a scam. No, fuck you. Hold on. I'm seeing if the SSN on this is actually correct or the taxpayer ID. Wait, now you got me fucking paranoid. The fuck? Business info. No, this is the right number. Yeah, no, fuck you. <sighs> okay, stop. You guys are fucking my... You're fucking with me. Yeah, fuck, now that I've seen the Shane Gillis stuff, now I really want to go on. Where did you pay the money? I haven't yet. I tried to go on the IRS website to pay it, but every time I go on, I feel like this happens like once every three years. Do you need like a, you need like a taxpayer pin bullshit? I never know any of the information. I always have to like reset it and then get new shit mailed to me and I have no fucking idea. You won't debate Destiny. I want to see you debate Destiny. I think you'll fucking smash him. I Who's, I don't know which one, is that Shane talking now? I mean, that I, I don't have, like, talking points and shit. I just go uh, that's, off, like, and that's what Oh, yeah, fuck. No, Shane isn't talking here, like, at all. Oh, well, fuck you. Who said yes? That's I'm Matt. Saying, what I'm saying he, like, he's suited for that whole thing. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to come out as a Destiny supporter. I mean, this is what um, Norman Finkelstein hit him with, though. He's just like, you're a motor mouth. Like, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're just a motor mouth. <laughs> no, that's Sean I want to have him on. I want to have him on, but not debate. I just want to see if we can bro down. Be like, bro, save the talking points. I think he does. Like, I think down? he bros down with. Don't you have a wealth manager or finance manager? Uh, no, I just throw my shit at a Vanguard and make crazy buys. Speaking of, <laughs> where are we at? Oh, okay. Check my CrowdStrike a few days ago. All right. It's coming back. All right. We took a little, we took a little tumble. Hold on. How are we doing? How are we doing over here? <laughs> Remember. For all the guys in chat that see them making fun of us right now, remember, they made fun of us for the Facebook buy. Woo, and how did that turn out? They made fun of us for months, and then it came back bigly. It came back big time. Okay? It came back big time. You don't have an accountant? No, what the fuck would I have an accountant for? What do I, it's just, if the money goes in, the money comes out. Whew, okay, how are we doing today? Okay. Only down 60K. Okay? It was 100K down before. So it's coming back slowly. I see we're up 0.16% today. That's good. Let's go. Our Nvidia is coming back too. Only down 40k on that. It's coming back. All of these are all these tech stocks are going to come back big, especially with Intel leaving the market, okay? CrowdStrike and Nvidia are going to come together and make a super chip. Do I care what the... Oh, God. Learning that this guy was Iranian broke my brain. I don't know. I might be, like, racist now against, like, people from Iran, the UAE, and Russia. I think I'm racist against them. I don't trust any of them, okay? I don't trust any of these guys. They're, 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 they're my Jews, okay? I don't, I don't know how I feel about them now. No, not, I'm sorry. I said the UAE. I don't know why I said that. I meant, um, Cutter. Are they on an, are they on the little island next to each other? It's, um, Bahrain is an itty bitty island. And then there is, are Cutter and the UAE, they're right next to each other, aren't they? Are they? Hold on, I don't remember. Oh, Bahrain and Qatar right next to each other. The UAE is over here, right? Yeah. Who's saying no in chat? Fuck you. Actually, not even close, Destiny. How hard would it be for Elon and MAGA wealthy allies to create an artificial recession after the Fed's high interest in quantitative easing? Or at the very least, heavily short the stocks for election? 
to for some individuals to come together and tank the whole market, I imagine it'd be incredibly difficult. Slash impossible. He said some while ago you want to go to a speech therapist. Right? Um, oh, it'd be nice if I could fix my... Uh, the sound of my... Uh, we've gone over this a million times. The sound of my S's is fine, but the um, placement is off, so it causes my jaw to move a little bit. I can place the S's correctly, but when I when I say my S's here, it sounds like I have a lisp now. Even though my, my mouth isn't moving, my jaw shouldn't be moving at all because now it's centered in my mouth, but it sounds like I have a lisp. I don't know if I just need to practice this until it sounds normal. <laughs> Or if I just need, yeah, I don't know. I woke up this morning to a text from the USPS saying my order was being held at a distribution center due to an incomplete address. I clicked the link to update the address and it told me I needed to enter my card info to pay for the updated shipping. So I did that. It didn't work. So I did it again with a different card. It failed again. So I tried again with another different card. Only then did I get suspicion, realize the website linked to wasn't even USPS and I had just been scamazed. And so I spent the next hour canceling all my cards when I have no cards. Honestly, I, I could see myself falling for something like this. Depending on what the email looked like, it's possible. I order so many fucking packages. I have so much shit all the time coming here. I could totally see myself getting an email where it's like... Oh, it was a text message. Okay, no, that would never happen. I think I've gotten those text messages before. Also, I like how they optimally like pick the perfect scam point. When you get like emails and shit saying your best buy delivery, and it's always like three to five hundred dollars. It's like it's not so much that you're like I would never buy something for ten thousand dollars, but it's not so little where it's like twenty bucks and you would ignore it. It's like this three to five hundred dollars is where every scam says like thank you for your receipt. And it's like okay. Boom. Hold on. What's the worst scam you've fallen for? Probably the foreign bride show. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, what's the worst scam I've fallen for? I'm trying to think video game or real life. I don't think I've ever gotten scammed in real life, have I? Well, I almost got scammed in real life. Um, when me and Melina went to New York, I didn't know anything about like the people at the gate. They're like, Oh, do you need a ride or whatever? I give you a ride. I'm a taxi or whatever. And we hopped in a vehicle and started driving. And it was like five minutes into the ride that I'm like, Oh fuck. We're in like a black SUV. And I'm like, this is not a fucking taxi. I'm getting, I'm getting taxi scammed right now. Um, I kind of like reverse scammed him, but I still got scammed because by the time we get to Manhattan, um, we go to get out. At first, I was like, I'm just going to pay the scam because I'm a fucking retard and I got scammed. He's probably going to charge me like 200 bucks or whatever. Fuck me, I guess. Um, in case you didn't know, if you go to New York City, there are flat rates posted from all the airports to all of the five boroughs. I'm pretty sure they're to all five to, or five, four boroughs. How many boroughs are there? are flat rates posted. I don't ever go to the city, to Manhattan. Um, there are flat rates. If you're ever paying more than that posted flat rate, you're getting scammed, okay? Like, you can Google cab. From JFK to Manhattan, $70 flat fee, okay? There will be flat fees. But anyway, so we get there, and I'm like, this guy's probably going to pay me like 200 bucks or some bullshit, um, or tell me to pay him 200 bucks. We get there, and he gives me a book to look up the price or whatever, and the guy tells me it's like $560 for the cab ride. And I'm like, bro, that's egregious. $560 scam? So I tell him, oh, sorry, we're from out of town. I, I only have like, um, I only have like 60 bucks on me. And he's like, well, go to the ATM and get more. So I walk into a bank through an ATM and I withdraw 40 bucks. I'm like, this is all I have. I'm sorry, I only have $100. And he's like, uh, this is how much it costs to get a cab from JFK to, uh, to Manhattan. And I'm like, oh, my friends told me it would be way less. And he's like, well, we can ask anybody. There's a police officer over there if you want. And I was like, okay, fine, we can ask him. Like I was just acting like I was a retard. I was like, we can ask him if you want. And then he's like, never mind, just take your bags. And I gave him 100 bucks and left. I was like, okay. Which is my scam, my scam fee, I guess. So I probably got scammed by like, I guess it wasn't actually that bad. If it's a $70 cab ride plus a $5 fee, 
plus tip. It's probably like 90 bucks anyway. I guess it wasn't that bad actually. And we got a cozy SUV ride. So you know what? Actually, you know what? I feel, actually, I feel okay about that ride. Fuck that dude. And he got her bags right at the door. I didn't have to walk to the cab line. Why didn't you just walk away? Because he had our bags in the back. Doug of 8K. We ended up getting basically all of our money back from him, though. Um... I'm trying to think if I've ever gotten real life scammed. Yeah, I don't think so actually. Probably just a combination of luck and not being internet retarded. Did Slicker pay you back? Yeah, he did. I think with interest, I think a bonus. But I think I only gave him like 500 bucks or a thousand dollars? I don't even remember. It wasn't that much. Control F. Borrow? What did he ask for? This is in 2020. It was 1.5K. I guess that technically was a scam, but he actually paid me back, so. <sighs> you and him weren't even that close. Why'd you give him money? I'm just a helpful, nice guy. Were streamer, streamers that close that you guys would just lend each other 1K like that? It was the money, just nothing to do at the time. I mean, generally, it's like if I have a lot of money, somebody else needs it a lot, and we're like kind of friendly, it's not like I can loan them or whatever. I don't, it's not a big deal. It's not like I miss it. And Slicker seemed like a funny dude. Actually, though, I really just do it so that I can have leverage over people in the future, so that I can sexually abuse them and say, I remember that time I did that nice thing? Now you owe me. Remember the fake stereo slash speaker box merchandise scam? Um, are you talking about when my parents bought, when I found out that my parents bought fake speakers? <laughs> my parents have probably fallen for a trillion different scams. Ugh. Keep watching. Is it, it's a dumb meme. It's 60 seconds, bro. I don't have time for a stupid meme like this. Oh my God. Okay, here. Yeah, Ryan, go for it. I like you. I like you. Yeah. I think. I think. I'm glad we watched the rest of that. Towards the Capitol. Secret Service said they have dissuaded him from coming to Capitol Hill. They told him they don't have the resources to protect him here. So at the moment he is not coming, but that could change. I would come to him and punch him out. And then I would pay the I've been waiting for this, for trespassing on the Capitol grounds. 
I'm going to punch him out, and I'm going to go to jail, and I'm going to be happy. Wow, look at that. Even when they're angry, Democrats res accept responsibility for their actions. Jessica totally scammed you over that river knifing. Also, YouTube has added some kind of predictive autocorrect to donos, and it is triggering me. Oh, my God. Wow. My dad runs a, a small family business, and he constantly falls with the pace 300 per year to put ads on our website. You will get so much business from it. Trust us. And it's just a zero-click website spam calling every business in the country. You don't know. Maybe he's gotten business before. You don't know that. You want to understand fell for the trimmed armor scam? Bro, I was the scammer, okay? What's the best scam you did? Um, I think it was when, I think it was me, was it Kyle or was it Chris? I think it was me, Chris, and it might've just been me and Chris, or me, Chris, and a third guy went up with, I don't know why people would fall, the internet was such a different time. Cause like when I say this, it's like, why would anybody fall for this? But it was so easy to scam people and just do dumb shit back in the day. Cause everybody was so naive. I was, I was, I was a horrible person, I guess. But we, um, you could just like gather people up at the edge of the wilderness and say like, hey, we're going to do a deep wildy run. Who wants to group and come? And I think we were on the RuneScape forums at the time. Do those still exist? You could go on the RuneScape like forums or message boards. It's where people would like buy and sell shit. Uh, and I think we were trying to get a group to go up. We got like 20 or 30 people. And when we went up there, um, we obviously we came like decked out to like PVP and kill everybody. And uh, we were on the phone at the time because we used the phone instead of any online any online communication things. I don't know why. Maybe they did exist or we just didn't have mics. No, you, you didn't have like a microphone. That's like a, that's like some expensive extra peripheral shit. And um, yeah, I think we just started killing. We, I think I started attacking one or something and then people got confused and then like two other people like started attacking each other. And then as it devolved into an inevitable shit show, um, yeah, me and Chris just started working our way through people one at a time and then everybody got ass blasted and killed but it's not like you ever got anything great maybe like a few dragon weapons maybe like a couple of mystic robes or some mage decided to bring his full kit up some ruins but never never anything too great because people would only bring it up for like 20 spells pussies how did you have internet and a phone line at the same time it's broadband dog i'm not 50 okay by the time we were pvping in runescape i would have been um i was living with my grandma so i would have been 17 18 we had a coax then. I will say though, I think I've told this story actually before. I didn't realize um, because I wasn't using my grandma's phone. I was using my dad's cell phone. Oh man, I I bet he still has an outstanding bill in Nebraska. So way back in the day, you had free nights and weekends because you would pay per minute when you would do a phone call. Um, you, when you called somebody on a cell phone, you would pay per minute. However, because it had free nights and weekends. Um, and my dad was using, uh, it was a derivative of Sprint. It was like one of those like add-on, does anybody know what I'm thinking of? What, what was his cell phone provider? Not Sprint, it was, a, it was a thing off of Sprint. Not Nextel, not Cellular South. Cricket, it was Cricket, that was it. But anyway, so they had free nights and weekends. And on Fridays, I think the night started at seven. Well, obviously I'm a kid, I'm impatient as fuck. And um, I call Chris, I, I'd usually call him at like, 657 or some bullshit right because i figured fuck it my dad will pay for three minutes what i didn't realize is the way that they charged those phone bills is if you started a call before seven o'clock every minute gets charged even if the call is like five hours long and they were and i remember my dad got a phone bill for like i think it was like eight or nine hundred dollars that first month and he was like steven what and i'm like dad i didn't know 
Rip. Yeah, that line got shut down. I have no idea. I, I, I bet that bill is still outstanding in Nebraska. <laughs> Jesus. Do you think Ukraine invading Russia will be a way to end the war? If Ukraine takes territory from Russia, they can use it to get their own land back and end the war. Who knows? I don't know if they can hold it. My biggest fear, knowing nothing, by the way, because I haven't been keeping track of this at all, but the only fear that I would have is if Ukraine invades Russia and then Russian citizens actually become invested or motivated to participate in war, and then Russia can actually start to mobilize like a real percentage of its population rather than pretending they're in like a fake war and not being able to mobilize as many people. That'd be my biggest fear, but, I don't, but maybe that's not like a current concern, or maybe Russian citizens don't give a fuck about that region, or I have no idea. But like, if I was thinking like Israel in the Middle East, that would be my big fear. Like my biggest fear for Israel in the Middle East is that Israel starts attacking Lebanon or some crazy shit happens and there's a bad attack. Like, you know, genocide, the Gaza Strip, nobody in the Middle East gives a fuck. Um, but if you were to do like a bad bombing run in Lebanon and you were to kill like 100, 200, you know, like Arab citizens or some shit, or even Christians maybe in Lebanon, maybe they wouldn't even care. If you did it in another country, now I think like the whole Middle East is looking at you like, excuse me, the fuck? Like the leaders can only hold, you know, the Arab masses at bay for so long. But who knows? Fake wars and special operation because that angle ended some time ago. I thought that Russia still says today. I saw that, I thought they still maintain that it's not a war. That if you say that you get like banned in social media or some shit, am I wrong? Maybe maybe they don't do that or they haven't done that for a while. They still deny it's a real war. Okay. Oh, Jesus, this bait and switch was so brutal. Holy shit. Walls confirmed Dreamcast owner. He regaled, regaled, right? Players with stories they found unusually relatable, like the time his wife had seized his Dreamcast, the Sega video game console, because he had been playing to excess. I think if we could have thrown pads on him, he would have been out there with us, Mr. Weist said. If we could have thrown pads on him for hockey? For what is he what is he referring to here? Or football? Football, oh, okay. Any thoughts about Joe Rogan's statements that he isn't endorsing RFK like everyone thought? Seems like he was peer pressured by MAGA and Rittenhouse. No, 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 no. Hold on. To be clear, what these people do is they're cowards, right? They won't endorse anybody. They won't endorse Trump. They won't endorse um, anybody. They might even say things like, oh, yeah, I think I'll probably, I might vote for Trump. But they'll never endorse him because they just don't want to take a solid position on it because they, no, they have no values, no principles, no spine. They're just fucking cowards. They just want to be able to, like, have a, you know, a foot in both worlds at all points in time so they can optimally grift as hard as possible. Russians generally don't give a shit about the war. Imagine the most eight political Americans, 70% of Russians know half as much about what's going on in the world or their country. Politics for them is something only people at the top can learn about. I understand what you're saying. And again, I'll, I'll say that like, it's hard for me to imagine there's so much history, culture, geography, there's so much different shit when it comes to Europe versus the United States. But I feel pretty strongly, I feel pretty confident that in the United States, if the US were to go to war for like Taiwan, I think the population, I think, I think we'd be hopefully on board with it if our leaders sold it well enough and we had like a good enough narrative, maybe. If China were to like land ships in Washington to invade the US, I feel like people in Florida would grab guns and go to fight. It's just, I feel like, but maybe that's just an American feeling because we're so far away. Like if our country got invaded, there's like an invasion to, of my country. That's just like a whole other, but maybe, um, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's different over there. I'm not sure. Like in America, we're so separated. It's hard to understand how isolated America is from the rest of the world. Um, we're just so separated from everything. The idea of us getting invaded would be crazy. Maybe in Europe, it doesn't feel necessarily the same, or maybe it does. I'm not sure. Who knows? You said Europe is Russia European. Um, yes, Russia is considered European.
That's what's wild about Russia. They get invaded and it's like another day. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't think Russia generally gets invaded that much. In fact, Ukraine might be the only country to have ever invaded Russia, like Russia proper from 91 onwards. Actually, from... Did anybody invade the, um, the Soviet Union besides Nazi Germany? Did, um, I don't know, like for the Sino-Japanese, like if China or some other country in the... Oh, did Finland invade Russia? Or were they just fighting back from an invasion? Or the Soviet Union, sorry. People are saying Napoleon? Well, I don't understand what people are talking about. Napoleon died in 1821. The Soviet Union wouldn't exist for another 100 years. I don't understand what you guys are talking about. Or are you guys just saying like the, the Russian Empire? Invasion of Russia, 1999. A repulsed Chechen invasion of Dagestan. Okay, but, like, I still don't know how Russia is composed. Isn't, like, Chech Chechnya, isn't that, like, a, a semi-autonomous region in Russia? That's not, like, another country, right? They were trying to be a country in the 90s. Cringe. Weren't there scuffles between Imperial Japan and Russia in World War II? Um, I don't know when it started. The only context I know for that is that the Soviet Union started to um, buttfuck Japan towards the end of um, World War II. I think... I don't have any historical context, so I'm only going by things I've read that are highly time-specific. But I think the reason why Japan surrendered World War II was because Russia, was because the Soviet Union started to invade. And they were going to, the emperor was like, well, we are 100% going to die. <laughs> we are, we are gonna be, we're going to be super killed. And I think it was in between the first and second nuke that uh, they were like, okay, yeah, the Soviets are coming. It's very important. We need to find out what Walls was playing on the Dreamcast because there weren't very many games for that system. I'm very curious. Do you know if China will ever try to take back East Manchuria? I don't even know what an East Manchuria is. Is that related to the Manchurian candidate? <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Russian sources report that Ukrainian forces were spotted in the vicinity of Belitsy, Belitsy, Kursk Oblast. Explosions were also reported in the area. Probably NFL 2K1. Were there sports games for the Dreamcast? I know Sonic. There were a few Sonic games. I think like one of the first... MMORPGs ever? Was it Fantasy Star Online? Was that the first big MMORPG? That was before World of Warcraft, right? Oh, Fantasy Star Online 2, was it? You remember Shenmue, right? You used to talk about it all the time. No, I don't think I've ever played Shenmue in my life. Were you aware that the Amazon rainforest is man-made? I didn't know that. That might be true. Maybe I read that somewhere. I don't even know if that's true. If you were just fucking with me. Isn't that the largest rainforest in the world? No. Yes? Largest. Yeah. Mm. 
No, I don't believe you. Why the fuck would you believe that? Why? I don't know. Why not? I don't know. What? Do you know everything about fucking rainforest? Kill yourself in a video game. Aiden Ross announced it because of Hasanabi. He has to return the Rolex he gifted President Donald Trump and give it to Baron Trump. Based. This is the difficult part, is when uh, a clear delineation is not made and Nick Fuentes ultimately makes his way to your dinner table at your private estate. Oh, no. Oh, no. And Nick Fuentes ultimately makes his way to your dinner table at your private estate alongside the likes of Kanye West. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to specifically do, that, do it? Well, I, would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, you you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and, and right like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by, but I'll tell you what. Perhaps no moment revealed Donald Trump more than that one. Is she in front of a green screen? Right there. Given the opportunity to disavow and condemn white supremacists or the Proud Boys or any of the racist and vile groups, white supremacists, he couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Told to stand back and stand by instead. So it is noteworthy today to inform you of who is pulling. Russia calls the invasion a situation, and instead of martial law, they implement critical position. I understand that. I understand that they've got, like, euphemistic um, jargon for everything. But I, my understanding is, and I could be wrong, but my understanding is that it, it that has a realistic impact on the population, and it limits how many people Russia can actually mobilize for war. That... If Russia is not willing to take the position of we're in a full-on war, Russia can't commit to a full mobilization of its population because why would you do that for just a special operation or whatever? Is That's my understanding. I don't know if I ripped that from a Perun video or something else, but I think it impacts their ability to conscript people, I think. In the blog, in support of Donald Trump, some of those same white supremacists, one of whom dined with Donald Trump at his club at Mar-a-Lago coming out and declaring war today against his campaign. Nick Fuentes now says Trump isn't living up to the America first values that Fuentes and his band of white supremacists expect. Adding this quote, without serious changes, we're headed for a catastrophic loss. At least he can read a poll. Joining our coverage, NBC News correspondent Von Hillier. Von, what's going on in MAGA world? This is the difficult part, is when uh, a clear delineation is not made, and Nick Fuentes... Do you think that Trump actually misspoke there when he said stand back and stand by? I don't think he actually meant stand by, like stay ready for later. Um, I, I, when I watch that, I try to be charitable, but the, um, it's just such an odd way to fuck up. Because he was already given the words, right? Do you tell them to, didn't, didn't she ask, like, should they stand down or something? Like he was, I think he was, hold on, let me read. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and- Yeah, so he's already given the script. Do they need to stand down? Not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, but do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you, what are you, you, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right boys. Like white supremacists and right proud proud boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by, but I'll tell you what. It's just such, it's just so, it's such an odd way to fumble that. It's just such an odd way to fumble that. Who is pulling the plug in support of Donald Trump. Some of those same white supremacists, one of whom dined with Donald Trump Oof. at his club at Mar-a-Lago coming out and declaring war today against his campaign. Nick Fuentes now says Trump isn't living up to the American. Is that the whole clip? Uh, well, no, afterwards he goes on to attack the left. <laughs> America first values that Fuentes and his band of white supremacists expect. It's an odd fumble, but a nothing burger. 
Is it an odd fumble and a nothing burger when Donald Trump is asked to condemn a group that would later be involved in the first breaching of the Capitol grounds that would go on to have its leader and multiple members convicted of seditious conspiracy against the United States? I mean, you realize you guys could only dream of Democrats having a connection this strong to any sort of group like that, right? Can you imagine if Biden was asked to condemn Burisma and Hunter and Biden was like, here's, here's what I'd say, Jack. Hunter, uh, keep doing business and I'll keep getting them prosecutors. Uh, but what we really need to talk about is Kushner, right? Like, there, no way, bro. You would be losing your fucking mind. Adding this quote, without serious changes, we're headed for a catastrophic loss. At least he can read a poll. Joining our coverage, NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hillier. Vaughn, what's going on in MAGA world? This is the difficult part, is when uh, a clear delineation is not made and Nick Fuentes ultimately makes his way to your dinner table at your private estate alongside the likes of Kanye West, suddenly there are some added expectations. And let's be very clear, Nick Fuentes has been a long time figure uh, calling for Groypoor Nation, which is another word for white nationalist. He is called Christian White Males, the secret sauce of America. He said January 6th did not go far enough. And so in his eyes, Donald Trump, who has been atop the Republican Party for eight, nine years now, there was a higher set of expectations. And Donald Trump, in his view, is not wholly fulfilling them. At the same time, I want to be clear here, Donald Trump, right, just earlier this week, you'll recall who Nick Fuentes went and had dinner with at Mar-a-Lago in 2022. It was the likes of now known as Ye, Kanye West, who just earlier this week kind of got lost amid everything else here. But Donald Trump said about Kanye West, it was specifically saying that he was complicated, but quote, a really nice guy, quote, he's got a good heart. And so yet in a lot of ways, that's still not good enough for a lot of people like Nick Fuentes. And what's, what's Trump doing, Vaughn, in Montana today? Why is he there? He is here for Tim Sheehy, who is the Senate candidate, Nicole, who is running to take down incumbent Democratic Senator John Tester, of course. (laughs) Have you have you heard anything about this? (laughs) I saw the meme in my subreddit. Is it true? Hold on. If Donald Trump wins the White House, J.D. Vance would be the president of the Senate. He would be the tiebreaker vote. And so they would only need one or two Senate seats. And they believe that with Joe Manchin leaving the Senate out of West Virginia, that Republican Jim Justice is going to take that seat. And in this that separate post got deleted. Wait, why? Ario that they need to pick up another seat. This would be a good place to begin looking because Democrats are on defense in a great number of states, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Was this an MSNBC skit? Or I shouldn't say skit, I'm sorry. Clip? Donald Trump's polling lead in multiple swing states has evaporated as Republicans have struggled to stem the momentum of the Harris Walls campaign. In the past, when he was on the younger side, Trump's response would have been simple. Just get out there and do more TV and do more rallies. But now the 78-year-old is hardly campaigning at all. He's just compulsively posting angrily to social media and doing rambling press conferences like the one he did yesterday, although crucially from the comfort of literally his own house. The Harris Walls campaign is trolling Trump for it, saying in a press release that Donald Trump is too lazy to fight for anything but himself or leave his country club fine by us. Now, in fairness to the ex-president, he does have one, one campaign event scheduled for this week, It's right there on the events page of Trump Vance. It is in deep red Montana, and it is tonight. Sure enough, here's a live look of people waiting for Trump at that rally site in the pivotal electoral bastion of Bozeman, Montana. Why there? Well, if you're feeling generous to Trump, you could say there is a genuinely competitive Senate race there, which was sort of what he suggested when a reporter asked about his light schedule yesterday. Actually, I'm going out to certain places to help certain senators get elected, not even for me. I'm trying to help when I go out to Wyoming or when I go out to Montana or I'm going to different places to help people. And I don't have to go there because I'm leading those states, as you know, by 35, 40, 50 points. I'm leading by record numbers. I'm going because I want to help senators and congressmen get elected. 
Now, among other things, is there a competitive Senate race in Wyoming that I missed? Um, anyway, so the idea, uh, if you believe Trump there, is that he's just that, that kind of guy. Like, he doesn't even want to do it. It's kind of a pain, but he's just doing it the kindness of his own heart. Except, you won't be surprised to learn, that's not really the story here. There is another reason that has to do primarily with a guy who is not from Montana and has nothing to do with Montana. And it's this guy. Absolutely. He's fit for duty. I think he will remain fit for duty for the remainder of this term and even for the remainder of another term uh, if he's elected. Wait, wait, can you explain to me how a guy who eats McDonald's and fried chicks and all those Diet Cokes and who never exercises is in as good a shape as you say he's in? It's called genetics. I don't know. It's uh, some people have, uh, you know, just great genes. You know, uh, I told the president that if he had a healthier diet over the last uh, 20 years, he might live to be 200 years old. I don't know. But uh, I would say the answer to your question is he has incredibly good genes and it's just the way God made him. That was Ronnie Jackson, the Navy doctor acting as Trump's presidential physician back in 2018, when Trump was being incredibly cagey amid questions about his medical and cognitive fitness. Jackson has now become a far-right conspiracy-spewing MAGA congressman in Texas. That wasn't always going to be his next job after the Navy. You see, back in 2018, Trump wanted to reward Jackson for raving about his virility and health to the public. And that reward was to nominate Jackson to be Secretary of Veteran Affairs running the $300 billion federal agency that provides crucial care and benefits to the nation's military vets. It was a surprise announcement, and it quickly blew up in Trump's face. After dozens of former colleagues came forward to allege that Jackson had misused prescription drugs, created a hostile work environment, and been drunk on the job. Those Holy shit. It's house. Created a hostile work environment and been drunk on the job. Those allegations were collected and investigated by the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee and its top Democrat, Senator John Tester of Montana. I understand he had a nickname in the White House yeah, among it, some yeah. of the White House staff. And, and it, was, it was the candy man because he handed out prescription drugs man. like they were candy. Actual house. The, 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 the White House doctor, his nickname among some people in the White House was the candy man. That's correct. That's correct. That's what we were told. Tester was reticent to discuss the allegations. A major sign that Trump isn't a good business slash org leader is that he just hires anyone that sucks his dick off. Yeah, I'm so curious about like his path to being a billionaire. I'm I'm so curious about that. I want to know, was he just set up for it or how? How did this happen? Because yeah, he seems to lack like every what I would imagine, like every good quality in um in a leader. Or, or like even somebody that would be like a businessman. He was a billionaire before the apprentice, right? People say born with a silver spoon, but his family, he wasn't born as a billionaire. I don't think his dad had a net worth. Was it even in the hundreds of millions? Um, but they were so serious, he said, that they could not be ignored. Uh, I think what we've seen is a pattern uh, of, uh, of problems uh, that uh, people deserve to know. I know a lot of folks uh, have said, mainly from the White House, is that, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. Look, it would be senatorial malpractice for, right. not, for us not to follow up on this issue and find out what kind of a person Ronnie Jackson is. And, you know, Chuck, I've never done this before. I don't know. I just want to get the best person to run the VA as possible because our veterans deserve that. And this, these aren't my accusations. These are accusations by active and retired military personnel that have come to us. We're just trying to follow up to make sure what's true and what's not. To be clear, Senator Tester was not out there on his own. In fact, he was supported by the Republican member of the ranking member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee at the time, the chair, Georgia Senator Johnny Isaacson. The apprentice made him $450 million? No fucking shot. There is no way that's true. How many seasons did that show run for? Even at 15 seasons, there's no way.